You know, I get a lot of questions asking me what colors I use when I paint my iconography. So I thought I'd make a quick video showing you the colors that I use and explaining some of the nuances between acrylic and egg tempera in the context of painting an icon. So the basic palette that I use for iconography and also oil painting or any other painting in general, I pretty much revolve around this palette. And it is based on just a handful of basic colors. Now the colors that I use, sort of my foundation, uh, all have their roots in a historic palette, meaning these colors were used by iconographers and artists going all, all the way back till, you know, time immemorial or whatever. Um, and I'll just go over them real quick. This is black, obviously. You can use bone black or ivory black, or you can use oxide black. I use both. When I paint egg tempera, I use bone black because it's a little bit darker, and I occasionally use it in like the eyes, you know, like the pupils of the eyes. But for the most part, I use this oxide black because when it's mixed with white, I'll show you. Um, I think I actually have some mixed up. When it's mixed with white, of course, uh, it creates a blue. See, there we go. It creates a blue. Now, this might appear gray, okay? That might appear gray, but when you put a warm color next to it, like, let's say this, this is uh, English red, I believe, or I always forget what it's called. Natural red oxide, the English red, same difference. Okay, when you put next to some red, it looks blue, but that's just black and white, essentially. And if you notice, that's the same color that you see in frescoes in the background. I'm gonna do a video on color symbolism and iconography that's a whole other conversation, so I won't go there, but um, yeah, that's so that's why I use that oxide black most of the time, just because it yields a, a more cool gray. Okay, and then I'll just go over the basics and then I'll, I'll, I'll show you the add-on colors that I use. So we have black, obviously. Uh, the red I, I use, I use two different reds and that's pretty much it. This is uh, cadmium red light, or if you're gonna use a more historical, historical palette, um, you can use cinnabar or vermilion. It's basically the same thing. This is just synthetic. Um, and then yellow ochre, there's yellow ochre pale, yellow ochre medium, lemon ochre. I recommend just a basic middle value yellow ochre. This is Blue Ridge from uh, Natural Pigments, Rublo. And then titanium white, pretty simple. So there's those four colors generally, black, red, yellow, and white. I basically have a primary color setup. Now, for convenience sake, and also because some, I'm not, I said I wouldn't go into transparent and opaque colors and all that. There's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube about that. You know, you can go look up color theory videos, there's literally millions of them and people that can explain it a lot better than me. So I recommend doing that if you're really interested in getting into like the nerdy aspects of color or whatever. But in the context of iconography, at this point, that's not as important. So anyway, um, some of the other colors I use are burnt umber. Now this is like a, let's see here. So this is a, a warm brown. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> the reason I use this, uh, is, I mean, you can make this from black and red, but this, this, this just has properties that I like that when I edit to flesh tones or whatnot, that can lower the saturation, meaning it can take something that looks almost too colorful and too bright and make it look more, uh, gray it down and look more closer to real flesh tones. So I use that, oops. <clears throat> I also use raw umber. I use this a lot. This is 
probably the color I use most besides white when I'm oil painting or doing any sort of like Western style art. Um, but I still use it in my iconography palette here. This is, uh, like I said earlier, natural red oxide, English red, from, um, Venetian red. You know, there's differences there, but fundamentally they are a cool blue. So when, I, when you mix it with white, it, it, um, it, you, you can really see this. If you mix it with, like if you mix this yellow, or excuse me, God. if you mix this red with white, uh, it, it creates a pink, but it's a warmer, almost orangey pink. This, it'll create almost like a, a cool bluish purpley kind of color. So anyway, that's why I use that. I like to have multiple different, um, multiple different reds that sort of lean one way or the other. And it all sort of depends on the style of iconography I'm doing. I do iconography across the, um, I just do tons of different styles of iconography from Cretan to more contemporary, whatever. I just, I need to have a, a bigger palette so I can accommodate that with a little more ease than trying to mix every single color um, as I use it. So, uh, let's see. So, that's my basic palette. Now, I, I, ex I extend the palette by adding colors like this. This is uh, chromium oxide green, which is more like a pure middle value green. Ultramarine blue, and um, occasionally, I didn't put it over because I rarely use it, Prussian blue. Uh, Prussian blue is a really cool color. It's extremely strong, um, but it, for the style of iconography I do, I, I don't use it as much, but it's there. Uh, let's see. I also have pre-mixed grays. Remember a second ago how I mixed that up and showed you that black and white create this bluish gray? Well, I use this in garments a lot. And robes um, which again I'll make another video as to the, the method to that madness how to do robes um, but yeah so I pre-mix some of the stuff now all of these pigments that you see in these bottles started out as this it's powder okay this happens I'm not endorsed by this company even though I wish I was um, but I, I get most of my stuff from them because they're an American company and they're just a really cool, they're just a cool company. So I highly recommend shopping at naturalpigments.com. Uh, this is natural red oxide. And this pigment is inside this bottle. So what I do is I pre-mix all my acrylics. So I take this medium, this brand specifically, I've tried every brand on the market that I get my hands on. This brand is my favorite, uh, in my opinion. Lascaux, Lascaux, however you want to pronounce it, makes the best acrylic paint in the world. Has high pigment load. It's not sticky and tacky. There's some other good brands, but the handling properties aren't aren't necessarily the best for iconography. Um, but yeah, so I mix this pigment with this medium and water and a little bit of ammonia, some other stuff, to create these pre-mixed acrylic colors. Now, the reason that I do this is for convenience sake, number one, uh, but also this medium, maybe I can show you, if I can open it. So if you can see here, I'll put a little in the container, show you it as it comes out. So see, this medium, is you see how it looks white it's matte meaning it's not glossy uh, i use matte matte medium so that it's closer in proximity to egg tempera um anyway yeah so if you mix this in real time like if i were to take powder and like i do my egg tempera i take some powder in the palette and you know the egg medium mix it all up and use it as I go. If I were to do that, you can paint that way. There are some people that paint uh, iconography with acrylic that way, but I've found that it's, the paint, it takes a while to, for the pigment to marry with the medium and for some of the cloudiness to go away in the paint. And it can be really frustrating if you're trying to match a color or get, uh, get a color a certain way and it's not drying on the panel or the canvas the way that it's looking on the mixing board or, or mixing palette or whatever. <clears throat> so I, I tend to mix this stuff up beforehand. Um, 
and let it sit in a jar overnight. I will make a video on how to make acrylic paint. Shockingly, there aren't very many how to make acrylic paint videos on YouTube, which blows my mind. There's a few, but it's all like, it, 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 there's no real, there's no application for what we're doing here with iconography. So I'll explain this stuff in another video more in depthly, but, or more in depth, I guess I should say. But um, yeah, so uh, when I use egg tempera, it's this stuff, which is just egg and white wine. That's my recipe anyway. Um, and I'll mix it in my palette. This is my acrylic palette. I have one specifically for egg tempera. And I'll take the powder and the egg medium and I'll mix it together to get the right consistency. Uh, and then I'll paint with that. So the last thing I'll go over here is practicing. Cause I've gotten a few messages, people asking me, how do you, how do you practice? If you watch the first video that I did on brush basics, you can kind of get an idea for how I practice painting an egg tempera so that uh, I don't mess up a, an expensive gessoed wood panel. How I do an egg tempera is on this stuff, which is, uh, you can kind of see how thick it is. It's 300 pound hot press watercolor paper. Arches is the brand I like the most. I painted this about seven years ago. Um, yeah, and this is egg tempera. Um, it handles similarly to a gesso panel though the paint the paint won't lift like it will on a gesso panel so just keep that in mind but if you're trying to get the handle on uh, your color palette or mixing or any of that stuff any of the students I have I, I recommend painting on watercolor paper it's a lot cheaper than painting on a gesso panel uh, when I'm painting in acrylic trying to practice I just use loose canvas like this. Um, the other thing is, is that when this dries, you can paint right over it. I mean, you can do the same with egg tempera, I guess. But um, the reason I suggest the watercolor paper is, what if you do something that you really like and you want to hold on to? Or, you know, I use this for an example in teaching all the time. Well, with egg tempera, egg tempera is super brittle. It's not flexible like acrylic is when it dries. And so if you paint egg tempera on canvas, it'll crack and, and and quite literally disintegrate and fall off. So if you want sort of a happy medium between a panel and, um, you know, if you're practicing and you want something between a panel and a canvas, just use the watercolor paper. It doesn't even have to be really expensive watercolor paper like I use. You can use cheaper stuff. It's just, I recommend the 300 pound hot press by Arches. It's just, it, it handles better. It, it, it's just better. It's, it's the high end paper. It can be a little expensive, but you can get a whole sheet of it for like 25 bucks and it'll last you a long time. So anyway, but for acrylic, you can do this sort of thing. Um, and then I'll kind of explain what I use for a palette. Now, when I'm painting in egg tempera, I mix, I, I guess I should have said this earlier. I sort of do this kind of thing, but I do it every time I paint an egg tempera icon, meaning I will take my egg medium and my powder pigment and take one of these containers. This is just a sauce container that you can get at like a grocery supply or um, restaurant supply, supply place. I usually get them in cases. And I'll take, let me get one without acrylic medium in it. So I'll take my pigment, put it in there, take my egg medium, which I would do that, but I'm pretty sure this is spoiled. So yeah, uh, so I'm not gonna do that, but I'll mix all this stuff together and then um, I have a lid I can use on it. So you can kind of do use the same approach you would with pre-mixing, it's just egg tempera doesn't last as long. So I can mix up the colors I need uh, and, and put a lid on it. And when I'm done painting for the day, I can go put it in the fridge and it'll last for a couple days. You know, I, I, the longest I've ever had it or used out of a pre-mixed set of egg tempera paints was probably four days. After that, you're probably gonna want them Pre, or, uh, mix again so uh, but anyway yeah that's that's how I do that um, and I'll mix I'll have like some pre-mixed color and I have a, a different hard palette like this that I'll mix in and out of for my temper as well but I also use one of these this is just I'll actually show you the brand it's really 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 helpful it's this stuff again i'm not endorsed so buy whatever brand you want it's this is jack richieson i think but it's 
disposable gray um, palette paper. The reason I use that, A, it's disposable, B, it's not white. So I like to mix on a neutral gray or uh, sometimes a, a, a light umber surface. What it does is it, it helps give a, a, a more natural representation of the color. So like, I'll show you with this uh, red right here. So if I put some of this on there, Okay, so you see the value, the, the, the color, the darkness of it? Now watch if I put some on this white. You know, the same color, but here on this white canvas, this appears way brighter and way lighter than it actually is. Now, this is a lot more, I don't know why he's red, this is a lot more perceptible when you use more, uh, you know, more grayed down earth tones and the value or the colors and the values that we would use in an icon. Um, but just for, for um, demonstration's sake as to why I use this. So if that video was helpful, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or send me a message on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, the links will be below, be below in the description. Also subscribe, like, share the usual. I'm probably gonna be doing more of these videos and doing them a little more in depth, a little more planned. This video is just sort of an on the fly thing I did this morning in response to several private messages that I've received over the last few days. So um, if you have any specific thing you're struggling with, ask me a question in the comments or send me a message. And yeah, thanks for watching.